heard us around with the pusher. Like, I won't walk through the city anymore. I'll always get a taxi now. Always get a taxi now. It is suspicious that so many people have gone in. A lot of bodies have been found. Well, I would never have walked along the canal, to be honest. I won't be going too near the canal. But the fact that this thing's happening now around this place just gives it away even more. It's, it's blatantly obvious now. It's far more fucking realistic than it is. Now, over the past few years, there's been whispers of a serial killer stalking the city and around the gay village here in Manchester. People have started to disappear from the streets and then their bodies have resurfaced around Manchester's vast network of canals. Now, people go missing every day, but if rumours are to be believed, this isn't just a couple of bodies. There's been 64 since 2008, and the strange part is, most of them have been men. Now, the reason for this is that people are starting to think that the person who has been labelled the pusher by the media has been targeting people from the gay fraternity or who he perceives to be gay. Now, at present, Greater Manchester Police are denying that there is a serial killer on the loose, even though many of the medical reports have come back on the bodies as inconclusive or unexplained. However, my curiosity has now got the better of me and I'm about to put myself in harm's way by touring the serial killer's hunting ground. But, if that isn't bad enough, I'm going to be doing it with no crew, no backup, totally alone and in the dead of night. Just me, my camera and a flashlight. Before I do that, I suppose my first line of attack should be to have a look around the area in order to see what I'm dealing with and then finally get prepared for what could possibly be the most dangerous episode of Curiosity to date. But, before I do anything at all, I think I need to speak to some of the locals to ask what they think about the pusher, if he's real, and to see how the people in the village are coping with the possibility of having a serial killer in their midst. I believe it's real. I think it's real as well. Like, yeah, I think there could be something going on. I don't quite know. I won't be going too near the canal late that night anyway. I know that for sure. It's far too realistic now. It's like too many, um, too much, too much in common, all the victims, and there's too many like near misses and people reporting it. And a lot of respected um, criminologists believe it's real as well. So it was like about a month ago we saw quite a lot of police because. Like we were in Manchester 42 and there was like all oh, police happening in the canal and everyone was like a bit worried. There's a lot of people like looking what was going on. I think it is like worrying because a lot of people yeah. come out here. Uh, I think the media has jumped on it a bit quick. I think there might be some truth in it, but I don't think the, there's that much truth in it, if, if you know what I mean. It is suspicious that so many people have gone in, uh, but if you break it down over so many years and you break it down over the area, that uh, the so-called pusher has worked, I'm not too sure. There's quite a few people at Nervous Notice as well that, you know, people are being more vigilant now, they're not willing to leave on their own now, that's safer to go in groups as advised, so. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think, I don't know if, if nervous is the right word, but I think it, people are definitely wary about it, and, um, you know, it, it's definitely something that's on people's, uh, people's minds. Um, I, I think there definitely is, an issue there, there is a, a pusher. I think there's too many people falling in canals for it to be a coincidence or drunk people. Also, it's not just along the village that they're falling, it's everywhere in Manchester. It's, what is it, 67 in total now? 64. 64. Uh, I didn't actually know it was that many, I knew it was a lot, but six, six, it's me, yeah, no. That's a really high number. Everyone's talking about it in bits and pieces, it's, it's whispers as well of like, you know, what's going on, so but we, all, we all want to know who it is.
Now, before I did anything, I thought one of the best things to do would be speak to the people that actually live on the streets. Now, a lot of them wouldn't speak to me on camera because they were embarrassed about how they lived and didn't want their family seeing them. But I did manage to get one who would speak on camera, but on the condition that I blurred out his face. I, th I think I heard somebody talking about there's been like 60 odd recorded cases where he's been going up and down, pushing people in the canal for the fun of it. Um, unfortunately, it was earlier on this year when the, the weather was bad. I had a friend who ended up belly up in the canal. I don't know if it was like something to do with the serial killer or whatever his name is like, but yeah, man, if you'd ask me, it's a bit sick, you know what I mean? That's why we're on the opposite side of the canal where passers-by don't really come over here. Mm -hmm. um, but saying that, like, we always get our heads down in twos, you know what I mean? We're, we're never alone. Nah, it's, it's not coincidence. There's no way it's coincidence that people come down here drunk or whatever, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because when trams and trains stop running, the canal, it's a pretty simple route to get to, like, Openshaw, Gorton, um, Hume, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I don't know if it is a serial killer who's just picking victims at random, do you know what I mean? What better place and what better time? There's no cameras down here, it's quiet, there's no witnesses. The canals need to be patrolled coming into, like, you know, late October, November. How many, how many deaths has there been, do you know? I 64 now. 64? Yeah, that's what I heard. One last week, I think it was. Wow. Oh, it's got me thinking now, like, you know, coming into the winter time, like, uh, uh, yo, our kid, I think we're going to be sleeping somewhere else tonight. So, people are obviously aware of the pusher and there are mixed views. However, to try and at least find some of the answers, I've decided to concentrate my search in and around the canals near the village, where a good number of the bodies have been found. Now, as you can see, this is a map of the area where some of the bodies have been found. Each red dot represents, obviously, a body. Now, the bit that I'm going to be concentrating on is this part here, which shows quite a lot of bodies in close proximity to each other. But before I do this, I need to get ready for my nighttime visit. Now, as I was getting ready, I must admit, I almost called it off. I mean, after all, I'm not playing with a ghost or any sort of spirit here. I'm playing with somebody who is real life flesh and can seriously hurt me. But if I needed to find the truth, I needed to move forward and press on. Right, here I am, um, early hours in the morning, um, going down the canal paths where a lot of the bodies have been found. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to find. I must admit I'm a bit nervous uh, because, like I said before, I can either get mugged or, worst scenario, I'll come across some sort of uh, serial killer. So, fingers crossed. Now, let's see what we can find. As you can see, it's very dark. Um, put the torch on. Not so bad on this bit, it's pretty well lit. Um, but just looking into the canal itself, you can see how dark and murky it is. Um, a lot of building work going on around the area. What I'm being told, a lot of people come down here cruising and this is where it all sort of like tends to happen. But as you can see underneath here, it's even well lit, um, even though we've got a torch on. I'm not seeing anything at the minute. But like I said, it's very dark in the water, uh, very dark and dingy. Um, so at the minute, turn the light out, nothing quite to worry about. Um, because it's all well lit. So as you can see, I mean, it's a bit of a drop there. Um, if you were to fall in, especially if you're drunk, 
um, you'd have a, a real hard time getting out. Um, to be fair, it does, it does stink a bit here as well. Um, not the cleanest river in the world either. somebody walking towards me now. Now at this moment my senses went into overdrive. I was trying to think logically. I was faced with a potential serial killer stood on a narrow bridge over a canal, all alone in the early hours of the morning. I could either retreat, which would look rather suspicious, or move forward, giving my only options for escape to jump into the canal or fight. My heart was almost pumping out of my chest. But, I wasn't about to let this stop what I was there to do, which was find the truth. Alright. Am I what? When he stopped and confronted me, asking if I was filming him, I thought this was the beginning of a situation that over 60 people had previously been in before me, and I was starting to think I might have found what I was there for. If this was Manchester's pusher, I now had nowhere to go and I was all alone. However, after a few words between us, he decided to carry on his way. But, was this because I wasn't drunk and he sensed that I wouldn't be a pushover? Or could he have just been as nervous as me? But if so, then why did he confront me when he could have just said hello and moved on? So I pressed on with the investigation and moved forward. However, I did keep still checking behind me to make sure he's gone. Well, as you can see, there's a few people around. Um, don't know what the story is with any of them. Um, I'll turn my torch off for now. Um, a lot of it seems to be rather bright to be fair. Um, but I suppose if you're pissed or drugged up you know it's not going to make any ounce of difference really uh, we've got a CCTV camera up there and we can see that now there are parts of the canal where the towpath seems to disappear so because of this I had to move from this location and move to the next part where the towpath started again in order to continue the investigation I'm still wondering how somebody manages to fall in um, or so many people manages to fall in and uh, not manage to get out you're talking what 64 people I think it is up to now and it seems quite deserted at the minute got two guys there um, not sure what they're doing at this time of the morning now it was at this moment when I noticed two lads that were hanging around in a doorway. I've put an arrow so you can see whereabouts they are. Unfortunately the camera decided not to focus so you can just see the outline. Um, but just hanging around. Uh, I'm going to go towards where the lads are. Um, see what happens. Uh, some, either really bad's going to happen or something. Alright or nothing at all. So we'll have to see. They seem to have disappeared, I'm not sure whether I've come far enough or not. Um, just looking behind me, can't see anything. I mean, I can hear some banging now. Um, but you've got to ask yourself if there's somebody around at this time in the morning, what the hell are they doing? Um, still quite well lit um, there is obviously little dark bits but other than that I'm just trying to keep my eye on what's going on 
I am keep looking over my shoulder, etc. So, got some girls at this time of the morning, I haven't got a clue what they're doing here. Silly, silly, silly. And then wonder why stuff happens to them. I mean, for the early hours, you're looking at it, it's, um, it's quite busy. I know we can hear a lot of shouting. Which normally at this time, it means that there are people having a fight. So, uh, there is still, up on the main road up there, still people walking about, even though it's um, dead early. Uh, I am still a bit nervous, I must admit. Um, but like I said, I don't even think it's... I'm nervous about the serial kill. I think I'm more nervous about being mugged. So now I've got to um, navigate across this beam again. Or lock. I mean, you can see, if you were to fall in, you know, it's a bit of a drop, um, and if you were pissed, then it wouldn't be good. But again, if you were pushed, again, equally not as good. Now, I do apologise if it keeps um, going in and out of focus. I'm trying to sort of like keep my eyes on what the hell's going on around here at the same time. What's going on behind me? The last thing I want is for anything to happen to me. And I've walked up and down here a couple of times um, and at the minute I'm seeing nothing I'm torch on let's go through here um, so what's my conclusion I don't know how anybody has just fallen into the river uh, because like I said it's all well lit there's uh, guards quite a lot of the spaces down so other than that I don't I don't know how somebody's just fallen in. You know, you'd have to be extremely drunk, and I mean extremely, or absolutely drugged out your head. Um, but since a lot of these things are coming back as, you know, um, unexplained deaths, it does make you wonder, to be fair. But it's not my job to uh, sort it out. So, TMP might be right. You know, Great Manchester Police might be right. I'm not sure. Uh, but for now, that's this investigation over. Um, I've been up and down. I'm not saying there isn't anything because obviously the canal is a massive place. Um, but this is where quite a lot of the bodies have been found and I thought I'd come round and have a look. And at the minute, nothing. So there you go. While filming this, I approached Greater Manchester Police using the Freedom of Information Act on two occasions, and both times I was ignored despite receiving emails from them stating they received my requests. Also, while filming B-roll, I was stopped by a GMP officer who was asking what I was doing, and then after a short pleasant conversation, he said his personal view was that there was something not quite right with what was going on, and he thinks there is something amiss. But for obvious reasons, he couldn't go on camera and say that, and I respected it. So, you've seen and heard what I filmed. Now it's up to you to decide for yourself if there is or isn't a serial killer stalking the streets and canals of Manchester. Is there a pusher? You decide. Thanks for watching Curiosity.